So Grady Dick has been absolutely killing it recently, so what is allowing him to get playing time in the NBA with the Raptors? And why is he able to score so many points as a rookie? In this game we're, we're, that we are breaking down, he was able to score 20 points. He's doing absolutely amazing, so let's get down, let's check him out, so that you can play just like him, or even better. Really quickly, if you want me to analyze your shooting form, make sure to go check out the link that is down in the description below. Okay, so really quickly, this is a fantastic play, but Grady Dick didn't even set a screen here. He acted like he was about to set a screen, but this man was going to fight. This guy was going to hedge. They were going to essentially try and blitz potentially Scotty Barnes. And that allowed him, if he read that right, which he did, he quickly shed off from that screen. And then he used Kelly Olynyk as a screen himself. When he attacked that basket by that one dribble out towards that right side, that drew Kelly Olynyk's man towards him plus his own man, which then left Kelly Olynyk wide open cutting down the middle of the key. Grady Dick was able to read this and he was able to get Kelly Olenek the ball for that dunk. When you play in the NBA or even if you are maybe struggling to get playing time, being able to cut off ball, finding ways to get yourself open within your team's offense is extremely important. So what happens here is there's a kick out pass to Kelly Olenek on the wing. If we're watching Grady Dick's defender right here, watch what happens. He's ball watching and even tries to close out on Kelly Olynyk. Fun fact, I played against Kelly Olynyk multiple times when I was a kid and when I was younger. But Grady Dick was able to cut back door, cut baseline because his man played way too high on Kelly Olynyk. Obviously, Kelly Olynyk has fantastic court awareness and he was able to find Grady Dick cutting to that basket. Now, when you're cutting to the basket here, Grady Dick did score. However, there are options because now there's a help defender coming down. If you don't feel like you are confident enough on scoring on this man, there's a man in the corner who is wide open. And that's exactly what happens here. Grady Dick was able to score with the dunk. He could have easily kicked it out. He didn't have to. He felt confident that he was able to make that dunk and he did now after this defensive rebound Pirtle was able to outlet that ball right away to RJ Barrett now watch how fast and how much Grady Dick is running down court he's running straight down court with his head facing the ball this is very important a lot of younger players will run down court and they're looking down court they're not caring about what happens to the ball or they'll jog down court or they'll sit right here and ask for an outlet when they should be trying to sprint down court instead so he sprints down court they're too wide. We got a guy wide on this side. We got Grady Dick on that side. Ball goes down middle for obvious reasons. They're setting up in a 1-1 exactly what they should be doing. However, depending on what your coach wants, I'm going to tell you right now, there are some coaches that will say they only want you to sprint down to the free throw line extended and then cut in. While there's other coaches who will say, okay, if you're a good shooter, you can go down to the corner. Myself personally, as a coach, it comes down to the individual player, what they feel comfortable with. Personally, if it's somebody like Keneal or Ethan or Dan, David, I would prefer them going to the corner because they are very good three-point shooters. And if you don't know who those names are, you should check out my short videos on YouTube. But basically, RJ Barrett is able to draw that initial defender. The ball goes out to Grady Dick on the corner. Player on this side cuts in, which is a fantastic option when somebody pops to the three on the opposite side. And then Grady Dick is able to hit that three with a guy already getting ready to get that rebound in case Grady Dick missed his shot, which he didn't because he's a very good three-point shooter. Now, this is Grady Dick in the corner. This is his defender. And being able to read your initial defender is extremely important. And then being able to read all subsequent, uh, subsequent defenders is important too. So here, he is coming off the screen. His man goes underneath the screen, and in my opinion, if a man goes underneath the screen, that is telling me that he does not respect my three-point shot, and he does, Grady Dick does look like he's about to potentially shoot it. He's using his defender to his advantage. He's looking at the rim. He's almost squaring up. He's always shooting with a slight angle to his body anyways, and then... He's able to split his feet. This is extremely important because his defender's momentum is going this way. By getting this foot as your negative step pushing back the opposite direction as to where your defender is coming from, this will allow you to have that angle, that lane to the basket. 
When he's attacking the basket, he only took one dribble. He picks it up nice and early. This is extremely important if you want to become a very good slasher or driver in basketball. Being able to pick up that ball early, taking your two big steps, and then reaching out for that layup is what allowed him to get that layup. There's a lot of coaches who will say no underhand layups in practice or in games. Well, that's the only way you're going to be able to score on elite or higher level or even high school defenders eventually you have to reach out away from your body to be able to make those shots now watch what grady dick does right here on the scotty barnes drive scotty barnes gets that kick out pass he drives to the rim he draws defenders but grady dick just lifted from the corner up towards the wing he's getting farther away from this defender and this defender by lifting up that allows scotty barnes to be able to hit him with a pass so that grady dick was able to shoot that three-point shot and while this was slightly contested Grady Dick is an NBA player, which means that he's probably taken well over tens of thousands of shots, so he knows exactly how long it's going to take him to get up into the air for this closeout defender. So even though that's contested, it's not really contested in Grady Dick's eyes. And obviously this shot did go in. This is actually a really fun horns play. I, I have not seen this on pretty much any team other than the Toronto Raptors. They've ran this a few times. But basically what you're seeing is Grady Dick acting in horns like if he's about to set a screen. Because in horns, this is actually a very good, easy play. You get one guy who sets the screen up. This guy pops. That's a screen and roll action. And then usually this guy's defender will come down. And you can either hit the roll man. You can hit the corner three. Or you can take it right to the rim. Or you can pop for the three yourself. This is a very common play. But... Grady Dick's defender obviously reads this because that's a horns play that 80% of professional teams run, if not more. So this allows Grady Dick to now be using Kelly Olynyk as a screen, which I'm going to be honest with you, this is a this is a play anyways, a play in horns. It's a simple play, but by faking that screen first and then using Kelly Olynyk as a screen is absolutely amazing. That allows Grady Dick, because he's such a great shooter anyways, to fake. Watch the footwork. The footwork is absolutely amazing. He pops out, he squares up like he's about to receive that pass. This gets this guy a bit higher so that he can try and intercept that pass to Grady Dick. Grady Dick then cuts back door, and because this man is not in position to cut off that cut, that allows Grady Dick to be wide open for that reverse alley-oop layup. Using plays to your advantage works extremely well. Being able to work off ball while inside of your team's offense is extremely important. If you want to become an elite player, whether just making a college team or just making an NBA team and then making a name for yourself so that you play at a higher level and get paid more potentially, you need to know how to move off ball first because you're not always going to be in the position to be that on ball player. So, by being able to work off ball and understanding how to will allow you to get more playing time, especially if you're a bench player and not necessarily the team's star yet, just by moving off ball like Grady Dick does allows you to get more playing time, which allows you to become a star in the future. I hope that this video has helped you. If you want me to analyze your shooting form, make sure to go check out the link down in the description below, and I'll see you guys again in my next video.